As time evolves, the game of rugby, many, many people reflect on, on the greats of the game. And uh, today I've got the esteemed pleasure of uh, having an opportunity to have a quick few words with Sir Wilson Winnerow. Uh, of course, 77 games for the All Blacks, 32 tests, of which he, he captained them 30 times out of those 32. He's uh, famous for his style of leadership, which he once described in a book as uh, just do as I tell you on the field. And if the results don't go away, I'll take care of that afterwards. He was played a lot of his rugby in the uh, in the 60s, in an era where tours were still plentiful. Long, long tours, long time away from home. Surrounded by great players, Meads, Tremaine, Graham, McEwen, and of course Frank McMullen, the, uh, the winger, who uh, came to prominence in 1960 tour to South Africa. Where you were captaining that side, Wilson. Yes, I captain that tour. That uh, was about a four and a half month tour. I think we were away for. Um, uh, 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 I think we played about thirty five games or that sort of number. Thirty five and one tour. Mm. Well, it might have been thirty four or thirty six, but it was somewhere in mid thirties. <laughs> That's outstanding. During that time, you were away. Uh, maybe off the mark here, but that'd be about the same time Snell would have been going for gold, would it? Uh, yes, they, well, that was 1960 games in Rome that mm. Halberg and Snell won and I can recall we sent a, a message from the team up prior to the games to, the, well, to the New Zealand team really, and wishing, wishing them well and it was, of course, one of the great days in New Zealand sport really that afternoon. Did that, did, did that result in obviously getting, getting the results through to the team, did, did that bring the team closer together, just the, the success of another Kiwi on foreign soil sort of thing? Was it oh, like... no more than you get a pleasure out of seeing some of your own country people doing well, but if they hadn't won, it wouldn't have affected the team either way. We, we had our job to do, they had theirs, really. Mm. Mm. In, in the series in 1960, you of course had the, uh, the dubious honour of marking Pete Detroit, a uh, very powerful... South African scrumgery would have only been a young lad still back then, but uh, it's quite well documented the encounters you guys had throughout the series. Oh, yeah, well, the, Pete was a, well, he was a strong scrummer, he was, and, and of course the, what most people don't understand is the tight head foot, front row forward has a degree of advantage over the loose head because he's got two shoulders here and he can lever off one and pull down the other. and. Uh, being the loose head, you're always just at a slight disadvantage because you've got nothing to rest your left hand on. Uh, and once you touch the ground, you're in trouble. Now, of course, today, all of that stuff's outlawed. You can't you can't bend and twist and lower. And, but it wasn't then. So we had some fine old things and scrum piles up and this and that. And uh, some of the media at the time were saying how we're being out scrummed. Well, Neville Lodge's book on the tour, he has the tight head count, and uh, New Zealand won the scrums in the it, the tight head count in the over the four tests was something like twelve three to New Zealand. <laughs> Outstanding. You uh, during that time you you were still a, a young man yourself and uh, quite handy with the fists. Uh, New Zealand University's boxing champion. Did you ever have to revert back to a, a few disciplinary measures for, for Pete during that tour? What? No. <laughs> <laughs> Never haven't. We'll, yeah. we'll, we'll probably Never thought about it. <laughs> <laughs> um, of, of course, the, the tour was uh, as, as well remembered uh, as the, the one that got yeah. away. To, you're going to have to pause that and take it, mate. 